Hello friends and happy Capesmas! Today I'm going to be walking you through step by step the tutorial for the nymph cape pattern. Before getting started I would like to address the elephant in the room. This design is basically a less intricate version of another capelet that was done by the Brazilian Baroness and I will have hers you know here for you to see. It lodged itself into my subconscious when I was doing my cape designs and then I realized after I finished the pattern that this was not my creation, this was actually very historic and very old, but Brazilian Baroness is who brought it back up into the forefront of my mind. If pattern drafting is something that you particularly enjoy, she has a full tutorial for how to draft her version of the pattern, but if you prefer to have a PDF pattern to help you through your project, I've got you covered. Also my version has a secret pocket, so it's unique. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anywho, let's jump right into the tutorial. Can you get the ball for it? After cutting out all of your pieces, what you're going to want to do is first assemble the hood and both ruffles, the mid tier and the bottom ruffle. And of course, these are going to be sewn right sides together with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Be sure not to sew over any pins. And feel free to do all of this in one bundle, sewing together the hood and all of the tiers. Next, we're going to be prepping all of the pieces to be sewn together by doing the top stitching on all of the hems. Start with the sides of the nymph cape base. Those are very important to have hemmed before continuing on with the top tier. Here you can see that on the top tier, we are going to fold under the raw edges by a fourth of an inch, and then again by about a half of an inch to make a nice little narrow hem. Not a proper narrow hem, but you know what I mean. But first, let's trim that corner just a little bit to reduce bulk. Much better. That'll be a much cleaner finish there. Along the open edge of the hood, or the part that goes out around the face, we're going to do that same hem by folding it under by about a fourth of an inch, and then again by about a half of an inch, and pressing well. We're also going to do this along the bottom and side edges of all of the tiers, including the mid tier and the bottom tier paying special attention to those corners, of course. We will also be top stitching and hemming the top edge of the pocket, if you choose to include the pocket. And while we're doing all of this, you may as well do the top stitching on the ties. But honestly, you can add the ties at any point in this process. But now let's do that top stitching. I've got my stitch length set to about three millimeters and I'm just going along the edge here, keeping it as consistent as possible. When I come up to this corner, I'm going to put my needle into the down position, lift my foot and pivot my work so that I have a perfect 90 degree angle. Just like that. And here you can see the elegant touch that top stitching adds. Of course, if you don't like this look, you can do a hand done hem, or you could also do an invisible stitch if you enjoy suffering. Once all of your top stitching is done, you're going to go ahead and gather the top edges of your ruffles. To gather your ruffles, you're going to do a nice long stitch and then pull on the top thread of the top stitching to gather it in. This can also be done by hand with a running stitch or with a ruffler foot. Next, use the guidelines on the main nymph pattern to lie your ruffles face down and line the seam allowance up with them. You want to install them upside down so that they will fall dramatically and have a little bit more volume, as opposed to installing them with the raw edges facing up and exposed. When gathering ruffles, I like to mark the midpoint both on my ruffle and on the thing that I'm gathering it down to fit onto so that I can make sure that they line up and I have a nice even ruffle. I'm then going to take this over to my machine and stitch it down with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance or a rough estimate of it using the edge of your sewing foot as a guide. As long as it is consistent and even, it'll look great. Then move on to the bottom ruffle and do basically the exact same thing, but it'll be much easier because it's just a normal seam line where both ends are meeting up and you can follow with your seam gauge just as you would normally. Once you have these ruffles attached, you're going to move on to attaching all of the pieces to each other, but you may want to consider stay stitching along the necklines, because these necklines are cut on a curve and the bias of the fabric can cause that curve to stretch out. 
Either way, you're going to put it all together in the same way. You want the body of the cape facing wrong side up, and then you're going to put down the hood right side up. And you're going to smooth that out and make sure that it is in line with the bottom body. And then place down the top tier piece, wrong side facing up, and make sure that those are all in line with each other. Pin this well and sew it on your machine with a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you want to get really fancy, you can bind this seam with some seam binding or some bias tape, or go over it with a zigzag stitch. And now it is time to show you how to add the optional secret pocket. Fold the edges of it under and press it well before moving on to attaching it to your cape. You can see here that that little place where we marked when we were cutting out our pattern is still there, and we can line our pocket up with that and top stitch it down. I'm just using a straight stitch on my machine and being sure to back stitch at the beginning and end of my run. I'm also top stitching my ties at the same time, and I will show you how to attach these in just a moment. In the little hidden section where all of our raw edges go, we're going to pin our ties down and sew them on with a nice sturdy box. I'm just doing a straight stitch and using 90 degree angles to go all the way around this little edge where it lines up with the cape to make a nice sturdy box, as I already said. It's a very nice and very sturdy box shape. How redundant can I be during this voiceover? But now, if you've completed all of these steps, your cape should look something like this. These little capelets are so much fun, and I would honestly highly recommend them if you want to go for a whimsical academia vibe. They also look a lot better when you <clears throat> iron them. But honestly, my favorite feature is this pocket right here. It's so snug and protected. Perfect for secret magical objects. Thank you for coming along with me. And if you liked this video, be sure to give it a like so that more awesome people like you can see it. Kenya is really having fun with her ball. <laughs> if you like this video, be sure to give it a like so that more awesome people like you can see it. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. You all are the best and I could not do anything that I'm doing without you. And if you want to super support me, I do have a Kofi linked in the description box below, along with the Brazilian Baroness's Kofi. You should really check her out because she's awesome and really beautiful and her projects are awesome. And I have a tiny bit of like a, a work crush on her, not gonna lie. She's just really cool. Anyways, thank you friends and I'll see you all later. Bye! Oh, hi, baby. Yeah, you have the ball. That's awesome. Well, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do my job. Okay. Well, the microphone is gonna hear you if you stand here. It's gonna hear you. Can we throw it? You're gonna just bring it back to me if I throw it, right? Go get it. Okay, well, I guess there's just gonna be dog noise. This design is basically a less intricate version of a design. Kenya, can you, can you stop being so loud? This design 